Hey, friends, we are in a beautiful, beautiful spot in Utah. And this is more towards the uh, southern part of Utah. We're amidst these beautiful mountains, and this spot here is a sacred spot for me. It's just awesome. So what I'm going to do is take my double ball staff, which is awesome. And of course, you know I'm awesome, and Dr. M's awesome. So, And you're awesome because you're watching. So we're going to show you a few basic drills. I'll face you. She's going to face to the side so you can see it from the side. These are basic drills to start getting your digital dexterity and your strength, actually, um, up to par to being able to manipulate the double ball staff from the balls. Okay. So the first one is you start directly um, with your staff right behind you. Your wrist should be in neutral. I see a lot of people do it with their wrist jacked out to the side like this. That's the no bueno. So, starting off, we're just going to bring it our arm. We're going to hold the ball, but we're going to bring the arm straight up. So, Monty's showing you from the back what that looks like, or from the side. So, if we drop the ball and give it just a little bit of it, uh, movement with the fingers, it comes straight out in front. Okay. So then you just drop it, leaving the arm up, and it comes right back to its position. Watch it from the side again for me. There we go. And we drop it back. So let's do that a few times. One, two. One, two. That's it. Back and forth. Started to sound like Jack LaLanne, didn't I? I won't count for you. I know you can all count. There's no particular number. The key is to make this smooth. Now, I'm not giving you all the fine details about your feet and about the, exactly where your hand should be on the ball. First, just start playing with the ball. All right. Now, bring that arm down. Let's do a backhand shift. So the way we do that with a, a double ball staff, or one of the ways, is... All right, so now we're in the opposite hand. We're going to do exactly the same kind of movement. We're just going to bring it up. Then we're going to drop it and drop it back. One of the things I teach when using what I call the four partners is always do what needs to be done, but then allow to happen what will happen from what you've done. Next move, you're just going to lift the arm straight up. So the staff stays in the basic position. So if it's if it's touching you appropriately like right behind the shoulder, in other words, on the touching the anterior deltoid basically, like so, when you come up, it's just going to touch right in the front. If your arm can't straighten yet, obviously your staff is going to be farther out. If you can't get the arm all the way out, it's not going to be exactly right. But that's okay. We don't deal with exactitude. We deal with the real-life situation. And so we just lower that right back down. Lift it up and lower it back down. Don't try and do this as a stretch where you hold it for a long time. Just go back and forth a few times, and you'll find that your mobilization will have been enhanced. Let's change arms. So we're doing the... Backhand shift, and we're back on the other side. Okay, so back in this other side, let's add a component. When we come up this time, we're going to come up and down. This next time, sweep it up so you have a staff straight up. The staff may be out of your vision, but I'm holding it straight up. Then I'm going to lift the staff down and my arm down. Arm goes up, staff goes up. This is a high position, of course. Drop staff down, drop arm down. Staff all the way up, all the way down. I'm going to show it to you also from the side. So you've got two side views. Another one. 
what you find is eventually, whether you're going for a, a high up and over or a medium up and over or a low up and over, it requires the same sort of dexterity with the ball. So let me show you those three positions again from the side along with Dr. M. Here we go. So we'll go low first. Then we'll go medium. Then we'll go high. All right. So keep in mind that if you're doing this inside and you have an eight foot ceiling, you don't want to put a hole in that ceiling accidentally. If you want to do it on purpose, that's a different story. So you would use your low position of a swipe or your medium position of a swipe. I have a 50 inch double ball staff that I do in an 8 foot ceiling room sometimes and I always have to do it in a low position. Plus because the staff is so long I have to come out higher and then drop arm down and come back. So what I'm trying to say to you is that one of the great things about using double ball staffs or whatever length you may have yours is that you can accommodate for all sorts of situations. All right, let's shift over to the other hand. Go high, come low. All right, so let's take, take a look at, we've already done just lifting it straight up. Now if we lift it up to the side. So I'm gonna to turn to the side too. You can see basically I'm in the rear circle, or what we call back circle. Are good basic mobilizing moves not just for double staff play but also for your mace for your clubs and, in, and anytime you're using your kettlebells overhead these are great beginning moves so let's take a look at low medium high in the swipe low medium and high now here's another little tip for you a lot of times people forget about their elbow. Here, let me show you. When I come up low, I could just leave my elbow down and do this. But actually what I want is more of this. So I've got a fuller range of motion and then draw back down. So done properly, it would look like this, where that elbow ends up pointing also do, for example, medium then high. So I can go back over in the medium position and come forward in the high position. Medium, high. I could go low, medium. I could go low, high. So there's all sorts of great variations that you can factor in. Now these moves that I've just showed you, these basic drills, will also set you up for doing things like a Also set you up for doing a well, let's say a continuous salute. Of course, it's a little bit more involved, but it's still building on the same foundation. So they're good ones to practice. Let's shift hands again. Bring it up high and down, and let's take a look at the final drill. So we're going to call this our beginning position. So we're going to come up over the shoulder, just in a medium, out in a medium, out in a medium, and back to the top. Then we're going to do the same thing in a high. High, 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 and high. Change hands. Let's do the same thing on the other side. So we'll start high, then we'll come back medium, then we'll go down low, all sorts of variations. Let's we'll take a look at if we did a salute, or a, not a salute, but a cross, and we wanted to make that con a continuous movement, so we're alternating between the hands. So it would look like this. Go, circle, and cross again. Circle, cross, and as you can see, it requires one of these types of front end shifts.
to the other hand come around. Now something for you to, to be aware of is that we can do that also in different positions. So we can come up high, go high, down to our low position, do our hand shift, go high, hand shift, high. So what if we want to go medium? Medium again. Okay, how about if we want to go low? Do it low. Do it low. Okay. I hope you're getting some ideas that you can use with your double ball staff. 